Hello friends, in today's class I'm going to talk about the projectile motion. Before I dive into the projectile motion, I'm going to talk about some basics which are essential for the projectile motion concepts. So if I'm going to throw, let's say if I throw an object in air and catch it back at the same height. So the net displacement of that object is equal to zero and I'm standing on a cliff right now. So and then let's say the time taken to travel this whole journey starting from my hand and it goes on top and then comes back into my hand this whole process took uh, 10 seconds time equal to 10 seconds so the time taken to reach on top will be t half that will be 5 seconds and what will be the velocity on top velocity on top will be zero the velocity with which it will strike my hand v final in this case will be 10 let's say if i've thrown it i haven't talked about the velocity initial i've thrown it with the initial velocities or velocity of 10 meters per second so it will hit me back with 10 meters per second so these are the some concepts which we need to know and uh, let's say i'm going to take us in another scenario if i'm standing on the cliff and if i throw something in air and this is i'm talking about 1d motion and uh, the object travels vertically up then comes down and then it lands on the ground and the velocity i've thrown it let's say initial velocity was 10 meters per second it won't hit the ground with 10 meters per second you can't assume that it will hit the ground with 10 meters per second if you are catching at the same height only then it will be velocity final at this location if i'm only looking at this place from where i've thrown it velocity final here it will be 10 meters per second but if it is hitting the hitting the ground then velocity cannot be 10 meters per second and then the second thing if i'm throwing it in air and the total time total time taken is let's say 15 seconds starting from my hand i'm going to change the color starting from my hand to reach on top and then then come down on the ground so the total time to, for this uh, complete process was 15 seconds i can't assume that the time taken to reach on top will be half that will be wrong to assume so you cannot say t t time time taken to reach on top will not be t half okay those condition will prevail if you are catching at the same height all right and let's take a example now with respect to the projectile motion so what is projectile motion in case of a projectile motion rather than uh, throwing something vertically up we throw the object at an angle so if i'm throwing something like the, if i'm standing here and i throw something in in the in a in a 2d direction so means i'm throwing something at an angle of let's say theta with respect to the horizontal so this kind of a motion is called a projectile motion in which the object is not only covering a vertical distance it's also at the same time it's covering the distance in the horizontal direction so that kind of a motion is called a projectile motion this kind of a motion is also called 2d motion and uh, now we will talk about the basics associated with the projectile motion so one of the most important basics associated with the projectile motion is acceleration in horizontal direction is zero so what do i mean by that so the object is traveling some distance in horizontal and the vertical direction at the same time but its speed or its velocity will keep on reducing reducing over a period of time in the vertical direction but in respect to the horizontal direction its velocity will not change so i'm going to take an example here so if i throw something something with initial velocity of 30 uh, 30 meters per second 
at an angle of 30 degrees with respect to horizontal surface this theta angle is given to me 30 degrees so I'm gonna say I wanted to find I wanted to find the horizontal and vertical component of the velocity first of all so velocity horizontal component vi x will be equal to vi cos of 30 degrees and vi y value will be equal to vi sine of 30 oops sine of 30 degrees so if this is vi cos of 30 degrees I'm going to write it, this is 30 times cos 30 degrees. I'm going to try and calculate this value. So 30 times, 30 times cos 30 is 25.9, 25.9. Make sure your calculators are in degree modes. Uh, let's say this is meters per second. And this value is because sine 30 is 0.5 so this was 30 this value is easy this is 15 viy so i calculated this is meters per second so velocity in if i break it into components this draw i'm gonna draw it again so this was 30 meters 30 meters per second and the horizontal component of this velocity was 25.9 and the vertical component when it left my hand was equal to 15 meters per second now this will this horizontal component will always stay as 25.9 meters per second we consider the air friction as negligible although in real life there is an air friction but we consider it as negligible so this is 25.9 meters per second this will stay as it is 25.9 meters per second here also 25.9 meters per second 25.9 meters per second whereas whereas the vertical component uh, i'm gonna change the color so vertical component when it left my hand was 15 meters per second it may reduce to 14 here it may reduce to 13 here it may reduce to 10 here 8 here 5 and then may it will become zero on top the vertical you you will agree that the vertical component on top uh, vertical component of this velocity on top will be zero because uh, otherwise it will again travel more distance in the vertical direction if it is not zero so then it will start increasing in the downward direction downward direction again it will keep on increasing in the downward direction so vertical component because because there is gravity acting on the vertical component so gravity plays its part gravity value 9.81 this plays its part on the vi on the vi y but vi x does not does not change oops change over the period of time for the motion of the projectile so that that was an essential concept and then the second thing what we going to do let's take a real life example for the projectile motion so uh, again i'm going to take the same question i'm going to change the velocity now i'm going to throw something at an angle of again 30 degrees but the velocity is equal to in our initial velocity is 20 meters per second so you 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 can assume that you've thrown something with the velocity initial of 20 meters per second and at an angle of at an angle of 30 degree with respect to horizontal surface this surface so first thing how to so i wanted to find out i wanted to find out distance covered in the horizontal direction so one thing which i wanted to so distance distance covered in horizontal horizontal direction that's what i wanted to find out and distance covered in horizontal direction is also called as range so this projectile will land on the ground so this will be the distance covered in the horizontal direction and this is called range now i wanted to find this range first of all so 
I'm going to write the equation. So what is given to me? Vix and let's say and the time is also given to me time time traveled time time taken to travel the distance is 3 seconds. So starting from this point it takes it takes three seconds before it comes to rest again it will when it's going to strike the ground we can't assume that v final is equal to zero we always try to measure the velocity where just before the object hits the ground so now let's look into the equation so can i find if v i vi is given to me 20 meters per second can i find the x component of this vix vix will be 20 cos of 30 degrees so that value will come out to be 20 cos 30 is equal to 17.3 so this is 17.3 meters per second and i wanted to find acceleration acceleration in the horizontal direction we've already said that velocity does not change in the horizontal direction so if it it was initially 17.3 meters per second it will stay at 17.3 meters per second throughout the course so acceleration is zero so acceleration value is known to me initial velocity is known to me and time time taken to complete the journey is is three seconds so these three things are given to me one two and this is the third thing i wanted to find the distance traveled in the horizontal direction so i'm going to look into my formula sheet again and i will check out all those formulas uh, check out all those formulas which have which are talking about final velocity so any formula which has final velocity into it i will remove those formulas so the only formula left with me is v i t plus half a t square so acceleration is zero so this whole thing becomes zero and then initial velocity is 17.3 times this is 3 so delta d displacement value will be equal to displacement will be equal to 17.3 times 3 which is equal to 51 point 51.9 meters and then then in the next video we will learn how we can calculate the how we can calculate the net displacement of the displacement of the projectile in the vertical direction that's what we will learn and then we will also learn the total total maximum height attained by the by the projectile with respect to the ground so these are the two things which we will learn in the in the next video thanks for watching have a good day bye now